What's going on, y'all? This is Mike Brown, and I wanted to welcome y'all to this week's episode of The Art of Letting Go. Did you all know that we had a Patreon? Well, we do, and I would love to connect with more of you. I share a lot of unreleased episodes, extended episodes, um, you know, some some music, some exclusive content that I normally don't share. Plus, I'm, I'm trying to get off of social media, if I'm being honest with y'all. And I would love to connect with the people that connect with this podcast. So join us on Patreon, The Art of Letting Go. Peace. Yo, what up? This is Mike Brown, and this is The Art of Letting Go. Today, I wanted to take a trip back, back in time, to a time when I was in Boston, and I went to Maine, and then I went back to Boston. And during that time, I recorded a couple of episodes with Christina, well, Tina Cartwright of Rebranding Motherhood. We had conversations about love bombing, about art. And we really dive deep on the topic of art um, the second day I was there. So you guys can go back and listen to the episode we released in January. But I wanted to share some more of the conversations that we had. So I hope you guys enjoy. Something that came up for me when we were talking about uh, like just motherhood in general was... And you mentioned having to balance all of these roles, these roles of mother, wife, you know, friend, daughter, all of Mm. these things. How do you like maintain being Christina within all of those roles? It's a really good question. I would say first and foremost, it's totally been a journey. Yeah. um, And an evolution because I think we were talking about this earlier today, like, I have naturally been like, I think it's described a love bomber and okay. a little bit codependent. And I think that kind of stems back to my trauma and just kind of that void. I'm like always seeking to kind of fill. But what I would say is um, to be able to fill those roles and to continue to be myself, it's really required me to know who I am and get comfortable with who uh, who I am as a person outside of the relationship. And what what is because it's funny you mentioned that because I've had this conversation on this podcast once before. But what is a love bomber exactly for the listeners that don't know what that is? Great question. A love bomber is it's that person, it's that person you met at the bar the night before And all of a sudden they've invited you to meet their entire family and spend Christmas holiday with them two weeks later. Okay. Okay. It's somebody that has unnaturally quick attachments that form with people. Um, And then in turn, those people kind of, I don't want to say like victimize, but almost like victimize the other person in the relationship with Mm -hmm. their feelings, their quick attachments. Like, well, how could you do this? Like, why would you need space for me? Why would you want to do your own thing? Why would you have your own opinions? And it just stems from those really unhealthy, like initial attachments that are too quick. What do you think that's rooted in for you? For me, I say that's rooted in not ever having safe attachments. Mm. And I think for most people, humans on this planet the first safe attachment that's supposed to form within nature is with your mother right and so that doesn't always have to be where that first attachment comes from but like having that severed Mm -hmm. for me at the beginning and then throughout the rest of the course of my life i think i had unnatural or unrealistic needs and desires to attach Mm -hmm. and it was like too quick or unnatural or overwhelmingly like oh we just met we're best friends let's do everything together type vibe that's how i describe it to somebody i mean i think everyone's been in those scenarios where you've met somebody really quick really fast and let's not forget it's fun as hell to be on a fucking ride with a love bomber at first Mm -hmm. you have really amazing great dates you spend every second together and then all of a sudden you realize when you need to go home and live your life for a little Mm -hmm. bit because you've been together in each other's space infinitely then they start getting really uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and then you start realizing what's happened how do you stay conscious of 
like not doing that yeah or is it a bad thing for you do you feel like it's a bad thing i would say i found a space to get to I don't know, binge in that behavior a little bit more through motherhood Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you have these babies that just need all of you and want to give you love and hugs and stuff all the time. So I've been able to kind of just get a little bit of extra from that. But I think the way I try to remain conscious is do what's driving my ambition and my motivation on a daily basis. Is it my own drive and gut or is it somebody externally? Like, am am I letting external relationships drive what my focus is going to be on, what I want to go invest on, what really makes me whole? I think those are like the warning signs. Tina shares her thoughts on identity and artistry. And a lot of times people, their identity is tied into what they do as opposed to who they are. Mm. And I'm just curious when you left corporate America uh, what what were your challenges of finding identity? Yeah, I think what was crazy for me is my therapist at the time described it as, look, Christina, like, I know you want to get on this journey, but you have to realize that it's like your life is a garden. And right now you're trying to flourish and build a plant in a dirty, toxic garden overrun by weeds, sewage, pollution, dirt riffraff old baseballs and in order for you to really thrive you have to pull yourself out of that environment start building your garden in a more enriching environment and so for me it was survival mike like i didn't have an option to be like oh i'm just gonna like tippy toe out of corporate america and see what happens i was so lost in who i was i didn't even know how to hear my own voice what my own voice was that I knew something was very wrong, even though I'm like making whatever money. And then on paper, there's like this life that I'm supposedly living that looks good. I wasn't happy. I was clinically depressed. I was extremely sick. I had these tumors that I believe had come from all the stress and the toxicity and just being in a really unhealthy environment for myself. And so for me, it was survival. It was like, okay. You've got to figure out what your identity is. Because actually, even though you thought it was this life, it's not. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like this awakening point for me. That's real. And going from being, you know, like top corporate America to being full-time mom and that being like your role how do you find a balance in still being Christina? Yeah, that's really hard. It was really hard to make the transition at first. I was like, wait a minute. These are these are the accolades that tell the world what I'm doing. I also had to get comfortable. You're making me kind of realize this real time is that I had to define for myself what success meant. And it wasn't actually what society and the world told me it should be. Once I was able to like succumb to that way of thinking, it was a lot, I was more free to basically kind of connect to my real identity and not the identity everybody else wants for me. Because there's so many times often, even within motherhood, that I meet women that shame other women for being stay-at-home moms. And the question always says, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Oh, you just, oh, you stay home. I find myself with the pedigree that I've had feeling uncomfortable being like, oh, well, I'm like staying at home. I'm like building this brand and then feeling like that doesn't mean anything because it doesn't match with like, oh, I don't have it like this, this way of working that everybody else in society has. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Damn. (laughs) And something that as as we talk about like finding the identity um who is christina outside of corporate america outside of being a mother outside of being a wife who is the person and do you feel like that person shows up in all the spaces of uh your life good question i would say that who i am at my core is an artist mm-hmm. 
And when I realized that, I quickly understood corporate America was the antithesis of that. Mm -hmm. And there was no way, it's really, really hard to be this free-forming, dynamic, creative artist going against the status quo, breaking boundaries, speaking unfiltered in mm -hmm. that very structured, bureaucratic corporate life. And so it became very clear for me when I realized, oh, I am an artist. I love to create. Like, I self-express through my art. It could be my makeup, my lipstick color, my patterns. Like, I mean, my hair color, my hairstyle. Like, I like to create something different that feels really connected to who I am and sharing that out with the world. Why do you think, and I'm just thinking about this because when I quit my job, one of the things that I told my coworkers was I've played a lot of roles in my life as far as different jobs, but at the end of the day, I'm an artist. And there were people that were telling me that they were artists as well, but they were scared to be, and it almost felt like they were closeted artists. Yeah. And why is it that artists can't, or not, not even that artists can't, but why is this, this feeling of, I can't be my full self in this career, whatever the career may be, not even just being corporate, but like education and anything. Yeah. Like, why is it so challenging for artists in these other roles? I think it's hard to be an artist because we don't really live in a world where we value individuality. Mm -hmm. And I think if we did, like, I think you can think of certain cities or towns or areas in you, the world that are really known for showcasing individuality. And I think artists thrive there. Yeah. You can be who, exactly who you want to be, whether you're living out loud or however that comes to life. And I think for a lot of artists, there's this confidence that's really required. Yeah. And like you and I talk, I really, sh I, sh I don't want to say like, I struggle day to day with confidence, but I do struggle with confidence. Yeah. After having dinner at Boathouse, we went to the art studio of Patricia Busso, where we learned how to do some encaustic painting. I didn't know you were into art, to be honest. I really? never knew that. No. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's, it's my grounding space. I could have yeah. done that for like five more hours. That's what's up. How, <laughs> how long have you been doing art? I've been doing art really my whole life. Like that was actually one of the really positive memories I always would have with my mom growing up is um, doing crafts. Like we'd always do crafts. Like we were always in Michael's a lot yeah. doing that whole vibe. And then I got back into it again when I was pregnant with Kayla. I just felt like compelled. Yeah. And then she, my oldest daughter, Kayla, loves art. She loves painting and she loves doing anything to do with art and so i get to do it a lot more yeah so it's brought me back that's what's up yeah that's what's up it's james woods aka that yoga dude with feel free to feel free f r e e freedom allow your shoulders to freely fall away your hands to lie freely in your lap along the sides, whatever feels comfortable and free to you. Find freedom in a position you're sitting or standing, laying in. Freedom in allowing your mind to just wander from thought to thought, breath to breath. Freely allow the nostrils to feel with fresh oxygen and then the lungs to release, exhaling out. Let the next five seconds be a free experience of breathing mindfully. One, breathe in and breathe out. Two, Relax. Three. Breathe. Four. Five. 
Breathe in the freedom. Breathe out the freedom. As always, feel free to feel free and namaste. Peace. For me, music started my journey of like what felt like art. Okay. Because uh, I never really created from a space of like this has to be for this or for the radio or for that or whatever. It just always was my feelings and yeah. expressing them. And um, like I was telling you earlier, I felt like I knew too much about music and it kind of made it unfun. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like freedom. I really do. And that's what I get in painting. Yeah. And I've, I've done acrylic. Um, I've done oil. And I really like both of those. I really do. Uh, I just like creating stuff. I like expressing myself. And I recognize what it's done for me in my journey. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, music at one point was my space to express myself with with what I couldn't put into words when yeah. I couldn't share when I didn't have therapy as a tool mm -hmm. music was my first tool yeah and I'm curious uh what does creating do for you creating for me is grounding it it's that time where I feel like I'm my truest self and that anything that i'm experiencing a feeling a thought i i can i can get it out in yeah. some form with being a creative getting to create yeah there's nothing else like it how do you not judge yourself as an artist that's a good question i think i have always had this undeniable confidence in how I show up to the world yeah so whether that's like how I wear my makeup or how I wear my hair or what I'm doing with my hair like which new style or just even putting art on paper that mm -hmm. that's been a space I've always had confidence in to just be like it was never this thing that I felt judged on or said differently I'm constantly judged on the way I like to, you know, live out loud with mm -hmm. like color and fashion and stuff. But it just didn't matter. I almost was like, well, they don't live in the world I live in. They don't see what I see. And I see this beautifully magical masterpiece I just put together. Yeah. So who gives a fuck what they think? That's real. Yeah. That's real. Um, I think I judged myself a lot when... I started to pursue as a career. Yeah. Um, because now I've put a monetary value on what this is. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not creating that, then in my mind at the time, I was like, this is not good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had to like really take a break from it to get back to the connection of what this essentially was for me, which was love. Yeah. And I think that's really difficult because at some point you and I are both, this is our daily grind. Yeah. Now this is what we do all the time now, full, full time hustle. So there's this juxtaposition. We're going to always have to wrestle with of staying open to create. Yeah. And then making the coins. Yeah. And I think if I could give advice to anybody that's creating is to understand that everything that you create may not be for money. There are going to be some things that you for sure are going to make some money off of, but then there's some things that you might just need for your soul, mm. right? Just to, just to make you feel good. And, um, it it is hard when you are in it to make time for that and i think that's why it's so important to have so many different mediums to create in because like if i'm if i'm working on this this music and this music is for money mm -hmm. at least i have the space to go paint and just go express myself yep 
you know, or if I'm if I'm working on whatever it is at the time, like whatever the focus is of generating revenue, just having another outlet to just be free. Something you said to me yesterday that ties to that is you've made the declaration that you're an artist, which means everything you're doing is creating. For sure. So it's it almost kind of takes the pressure away when you can kind of create that boundary of just like, hey, I'm always creating. Yeah. And I love what you said about, okay, well, some things are going to be for money Mm -hmm. and then some things are just going to be for my soul. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful and holding space for that for ourselves. (sighs) And it's it's not easy easy because it's, it's easy to be consumed in, in what you're doing, especially with what we're doing, because like, you know, with a with a traditional job and I never I never throw shade to jobs work anything like that you know cuz I know I talk a lot about I quit my job I quit my job and I know sometimes that can make people feel like well shit I'm working cuz I've I've had people yeah. tell me like yeah I'm just trying to get off this job and it's like no nah, if you enjoy your job enjoy your job yeah like don't hate your job just because I quit mine like I'm I'm not <laughs> expecting everybody to jump out like if you enjoy it, enjoy it. But um, damn, why was I saying that? You were saying that you're trying to kind of like create this path for yourself of what makes most sense for you. Exactly. And I was saying that to say that we can't just turn it on and off. Like, yeah. you know, when I was a teacher, I could go be a teacher and then not be a teacher. Yeah. Like I c- right. can never not be an artist. Like even as a teacher, I'm an artist. You're right. You know, even as whatever my role is, I'm still an artist. And uh, I'm curious for you. Like, are you able to maybe not even turn it off, but like, how do you take a a break from that mode? Because I feel like from every role that we play, even being an artist is a role to some extent, but how do you turn that off in the same way of like, you know, sometimes you need to take a break from being a mom. Sometimes you got to take a break from being a wife or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, a daughter, mother, all that. But how do you take a break from being an artist? Because I don't know how to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because it's one of the beautiful things of, kind of being a mother and this whole thing I'm trying to build around rebranding motherhood, which is you have to really wholeheartedly go into who you are. And so because I've made this really like sizable change in my life to say, I'm going to go be an artist. I'm going to go be a creator. I'm going to go build this brand. It now allows me to be even more present and even more mindful when I'm a mom, because literally for me, it's like, okay, I'm not going to go, create i'm literally gonna put my phone down or put whatever thing down Mm -hmm. and go play you know yeti and the spaghetti with (laughs) freaking kayla you know and have fun or watch the twenty five thousandth episode of bluey dance mode because it's new this time yeah and it's changed and then i can actually jump back into the like kind of the parts of motherhood the monotony of it that can be a little hard that can weigh down on you a little bit and now they're enjoy it like I can enjoy it. Yeah. Kind of like that dynamic you said of, hey, well, you know, when I'm doing my art, okay, I'm an art, but when I'm not doing my art, I don't know if I actually just lost my own thought. <laughs> Mid-sentence. <laughs> Mom brain in action. Here it no, is. No, it's all good. <laughs> no, I was just saying like, no matter what role I'm in, I still feel like my mind is still always in artist mode. Like, yeah. you know, I, I could, I'm always hearing music in my head. Mm-hmm. I'm always like seeing and having ideas and I don't know how to turn that off. Yeah. I almost feel though that that's kind of the double edged sword that all us artists have to carry, right? Mm-hmm. It's that burden mm-hmm. that we carry. And some of us, hopefully you and I don't end up like Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. Um, rest in peace but yeah. you know where it's like the art just takes over you it consumes you and then you can't get it out of your head or it's in your head so much and i think that's so cool that your art actually combines this mental wellness aspect because i think that's the only way that kind of 
I don't know, that like grind or that gear of that art, that creativity that's always turning in your brain yeah. doesn't take over you and fully consume your being. Yeah. Yeah, I really <clears throat> I really want to uh I really want to like just normalize art. Yeah. And instead of treating it like a skill, we treat it like a language. Oh, I love that. Um, yes. Because people, at least what I've learned in working with kids is like, it's hard to express a lot of emotions. I mean, even as adults, we have that issue of like, you could be feeling some complex emotions. Like you could be feeling happy and feeling down and all these mm -hmm. things at the same time. It's like, how do you communicate that when you don't have the words for it? Sometimes our actions can communicate it in a negative way. But if you were able to like draw me a picture of what you're feeling or make me a song of what you're feeling, it might make more sense to me. I love or if that. I can respond to you with a picture, you show me a picture, I show you one and like, that be our form of communication. Like I, that's what I envision for the world. For the youth, the future. Yeah. I love that vision. It's beautiful. Cause sometimes words don't mean shit. Look, <laughs> look. Oh my gosh. That's so true. Yeah. Sadly. Sometimes they mean everything. Of course, of course. And, and everything like I said, some, sometimes our actions sometimes don't align with our feelings yeah because the feelings are so complex so it's like we we have to learn different ways to communicate them healthy ways and i feel like art is a really healthy way uh, a healthy form of communication and it's accessible i mean we're in this incredible like amazing space right now but art can actually happen too with a stick and sand on the beach yeah it can happen with a pencil and paper crayons markers food in your house i mean the mediums are endless and something you mentioned uh was it it had to be today um <laughs> allowing your kids to use real materials yeah um i love that idea and knowing that you create art with your kids something i was curious about was uh how do you how do you teach them to validate themselves as opposed to seeking your validation or invalidation that's a great question and we actually work on that a lot really intentionally so in our house whenever you know kayla does art the first question I ask her is sometimes she'll say, mommy, mommy, do you like it? And I mean, I'm not a robot, so this isn't a hardcore formula, but I try to have the first or second line be, what do you think, Kayla? Yeah. How do you feel about your art? Mm -hmm. And then I ask her to pick some feelings or emotions or thoughts about it and share that with me. Yeah. And then I will even tell her, well, mommy thinks this about it, but what you think matters the most mm -hmm. and just giving her practice yeah, and, and explaining that to her. And then also to role modeling that within my own mm -hmm. creativity and my own art of being comfortable and confident with expressing my art, however that may come and validating my own self in front of her. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, do you feel like you do a good job at it? I think I do. And I would say my litmus is how my daughter speaks about her artwork or okay. speaks about her work. That's how I would rate it. I would say when Kayla creates something, is she going to be able to on her own identify how she feels about it first yeah. or like on her own accord? And she can. But, That's cool. But the reason why I'm saying though, too, is that I say I'm good at it is because it's a practice. For sure. It's every day we're doing it. I mean, it's it can become monotonous. And that's why motherhood gets hard, though. Shit. Yeah. Doing that shit all the time when you're tired and you haven't slept and you haven't taken a shower in a few days. Yeah. It can be a lot. Yeah. What is the art of motherhood? Oh, the art of motherhood. I think the art of motherhood 
is realizing that you know some stuff innately, that you know nothing, even though it's on things you've lived and experienced your whole life, like eating, showering, being sick. You don't know anything about what that means from a child or an infant's perspective. Yeah. And then I think the last part of the art is seeking open input and feedback along the way. Yeah. And balancing all those different maneuvers at the same time is the art of being a mom because it's not always easy to balance each of those in earnest all the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, something we didn't do last episode, but uh, I want to do this episode okay. was five questions of freedom. Yes. And this segment is sponsored by Feel Free to Feel Free. And our first question is, who are some of your favorite artists? Oh, wow. Okay. One of my very favorite artists is Issa Rae. I fucking okay. love her. Yeah. I love her um audacious authenticity how she is just you know brazen and bold and funny and cheeky and just herself and just representing all the different dynamics of herself and the world loves her for it and i love her for it too yeah um i would say another artist that um i've always always enjoyed is van gogh I really enjoy the way he poured all of his emotions into his art and how it just kind of evolved and came to be over time. Um, gosh, another artist that I really, really, really enjoy is one you and I were talking about, Pharrell. Yeah. And I love him in fashion. I love his music that he creates. I love even from a parenting realm, like what he's contributed to the kids world. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for putting a good soundtrack on a, on a, on a cartoon movie. <laughs> All the parents are grateful. Yeah. <laughs> because people don't realize children watch those on repeat, mm -hmm. like 20, 40, 50, like, I mean, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's an insane amount. So when it's things like Coco Melon and I just want to like hit my head on the side <laughs> of the wall. <laughs> I just really am grateful for Pharrell. That's that real. Moment. And then, of course, Patricia. Yeah. <laughs> back here. Seriously, I was laughing earlier with Patricia because I told her that my husband had put some soft boundaries on my art purchases <laughs> because I was buying so many of her pieces because I just love her energy. Yeah. It was soft. Yeah. Right? Soft boundaries. Soft boundaries on my own person. <laughs> love you, Nate. That's what's up. <laughs> um, what does it mean to you to be an artist? To me, it's a privilege because I think everybody's an artist, mm -hmm. truly. But I also think not everybody can access that language, right? Like some people can speak. Uh, you know, 15 different languages. Mm -hmm. They just have that skill set. They can access it. And I know that not everybody can access that, even though it's in everybody. Yeah. And so it's really, a, it's a privilege and it's an honor. And I think for me, that's why doing something good with it is so critical. And that's why rebranding motherhood is something that's so important to me because I feel like I can use what comes out of me naturally, my art, my personality, like the things that make me, me, and use that to share my message, get more ears out here listening to kind of what motherhood is for, for moms, for real. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What about you? Can I ask you, can we just do a quick pivot? Can you tell me what it means for you to be an artist? Um, in, in the way, same way that you said, I feel like everybody's an artist. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a matter of tapping into it mm -hmm. and uh, just finding what what it looks like for you. Like, I think we all create in different ways. Um, you know, it's like you, you see people that, that do different jobs that you wouldn't really consider art, but the way that they do the job 
is so unique to themselves. So I think being an artist is uh is really about being unique and uh authentic and free. Yeah. You know, and um the freedom free. sometimes can be hard, but I think as long as you stay true to yourself, like it's going to it's going to bleed through in the art. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's it's about being free and being authentic and uh being yourself. I love that. I love that. Um <laughs> what do you consider to be good art? Mm, this is interesting cuz we I talk a lot about this with my daughter. Like we actually intentionally focus on this lesson. So I don't believe there's good art or bad art. I don't even know what that means. I actually feel like that's super judgmental for you to go into an artist's space or in a space where you're viewing somebody's art. Like you said, it's such a personal thing that they've almost like plucked out of their soul and kind of put out there for people. So I don't really, I I, I mean, I have what I prefer. I have like my preferences, things that like speak to me more. We were laughing back there when um, I was doing my piece because Mm. I'm obsessed with turquoise. Like there's just certain colors that I'm more drawn to and certain aesthetics and textures that mean more to me. But I always applaud anybody that can fully release and be free and put that art out. And I think you can feel that. Yeah. The best artists I think in the world are ones that have done that. I feel that. Okay. And you you definitely answered my next question, so I'm going to switch it up because I was going to ask you what's bad art. But, yeah, I feel the same way. There's no such thing as good or bad art. Um, There can be art I don't like. There it is. Look. Look. Um, Do you think that art is ever complete? Mm. or, Or at least how do you know when you've completed a piece? Yeah. I feel like this is something I'm evolving as I'm entering into this space full time. I think when I am in like this environment where I'm creating art, like, like tactful, like with my hands, I'm creating a piece, I'm making something. I feel like that's never done. Mm -hmm. You can always come back to it. Mm -hmm. I've got pieces I've started and come back to and come back to and come back to. Uh, we were just talking about that with Patricia earlier today. Like, that's kind of the beauty and the freedom of art is that you can just, you know, evolve mm-hmm. it at any point in time. What was the other question? That no, was that was it. Was that it? Yeah, it's that like, was it. Yeah, I feel like it, it doesn't ever have to be done. <laughs> I thought it was a two-part question. No, and the, the, <laughs> the, last, the last question is, I am Christina, the artist, okay. and my art is blank. I am Christina, the artist, and right now my art is storytelling. And the story that I'm telling is motherhood. I'm telling the story of motherhood also as a black mother Mm -hmm. and as a mother of, of two little girls. And that is my art. That's what's up. I like that. Thank you. Can you let the people know again where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at mommy, M-O-M-M-Y, underscore, Cartwright, C-A-R-T-W-R-I-G-H-T, on the gram. That's what's up. (laughs) Thank you, Christina. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Thank you. And I appreciate this experience, and we'll definitely share our art um, within the episode. It might end up as the episode artwork. Oh, yes. So I love that. Yes. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Mike Brown. And (laughs) Christina Cartwright or Tina Cartwright. I don't know. What do I, how do I close that out? Do you, how, how are you feeling about it? What are, what are you feeling today? Cause it can always change. That's so true. I am Tina Cartwright. (laughs) Still working out (laughs) my identification to the world. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) And this is the art of letting go.
Peace.